Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny. Welcome back to yet another FNAF news video. We're back talking about FNAF Plus because believe it or not, even though we just got the Steam page and a brand new trailer for the game, we still have gotten constant updates, brand new info and secrets about the game that we simply just have to discuss. So without further ado, if you are excited for FNAF Plus, please hit the like button. If you're brand new, subscribe to the channel. Like 80% of you watching right now are not subscribed, so please, let's fix that. Let's get to 50k, okay? So now that we've all subscribed, awesome, thank you very much. Let's talk about some brand new FNAF Plus info, starting off with something that I actually missed in my first video. So this is the Steam wish list trailer. We just took a look at it a couple days ago when it got released. If you've not seen that video of my analysis on the trailer on the Steam page, it'll be linked down below. But in that video, we watched it through, you know, we analyzed each and every single frame and then we left at the very end. But apparently I missed something, and that is a little easter egg of Freddy Fazbear right here. Look at this, look at how creepy this is. So this is a brand new shot of Freddy, super up close with terrifying red eyes. A lot of people have been speculating what exactly is this for? Could this be a zoomed in picture of Freddy's face in the doorway when we lose power? Maybe this is a frame of one of his jump scare animations, or it could just be simply a brand new render for the trailer. That's personally what I think. But either way, it looks absolutely terrifying. And now let's move on to some speculation and theories about some brand new mechanics coming to FNAF Plus. A lot of these actually got pointed out by Kane Carter, so shout out to him over on Twitter. One of the things Kane pointed out is that some of the cameras in some of the teasers are actually not there. They have attention symbols on them, meaning we cannot click on them. Also, interestingly enough, the camera in the kitchen has the option to go out. First up, you may be thinking, well, obviously, it's one of the cameras. Why wouldn't it be able to go out? Well, this does confirm that we can click on the kitchen camera. Maybe we can't see in there, but we will at least have to use that camera for a certain reason. Maybe if someone's in the kitchen cam, we'll be able to hear them, you know, like messing around with the pots and pans, something like that. But if it's able to go out and it acts like every other camera, again, maybe we still can't see what's in the kitchen with the camera, kind of like in FNAF 1, but it will at least have some importance that we will have to check on it and that something is able to knock out that camera. You can also see that the dining room cam 1B is also out in the screenshot. Now, what causes the cameras to go out? Who causes the cameras to go out? We don't necessarily know. If you remember in the FNAF Plus teaser video number one, connection error, when Bonnie shows up on the screen, right here, the camera does go out and we and we get this little animation of the actually exact same spot that we just saw in the teaser of an attention symbol and also camera disabled connection error. So maybe this text is what we're going to see when we go to click on a disabled camera or maybe we just can't click on it at all. But again, whether it's an actual animatronic causing the cams to go out or maybe it's something that we cause, maybe being on a certain camera for too long will cause it to like overheat or something, then it goes out for a little bit. I honestly have no clue. It's a very interesting thing to discuss. Are we gonna be able to get that camera back? Like, does it recharge over time? I would love to know your theories on it. Who do you think causes the cameras to go out? Do you think it's gonna be Bonnie because of that clip we just saw in one of the teaser videos? Maybe it has something to do with the electric room. Maybe some animatronic can go in there and it'll disable one of our cameras. I'm not sure. Speaking of of Bonnie though, another new mechanic for FNAF Plus is the animatronics are able to enter your office, physically stand in your office. Now the community is pretty split on what exactly this means. Some people think this is just the starting frame of Bonnie's jump scare animation because you can see a blurry monitor. You know, we're putting it down, it's in motion right now as we're pulling our camera down, and there's Bonnie. In FNAF 1, when you pull your camera down, the characters will automatically give you a jump scare. So some people are saying that this is frame 1 of Bonnie's jump scare after we put down the cameras, or maybe we're not dead just yet, and there's another way we can live if Bonnie or someone else gets into our office. I highly doubt there's gonna be a mask mechanic, kinda like in FNAF 2. Maybe there's some like audio decoy we can do, kinda similar to FNAF 3, where we can lure the animatronics away, or maybe it'll just be like a reaction speed test. If you're too slow and someone gets in, maybe you have to do like a, a specific movement. Not like <laughs> dodging out of the way, of course, that'd be 
so dumb. But maybe there's like a button you have to press. Or maybe you have to quickly pull up your monitor again. Not sure. Again, it's super interesting. Tell me, what do you think the animatronics are going to do when they're in the office? How can we get rid of them? Are we just going to be dead? And finally, the last mechanic we got to talk about is a plus symbol at the end of one of the weekdays in the screenshot. I personally think this one's pretty self-explanatory. In the description for the Steam page of FNAF Plus, it says as one of the features, is a brand new plus mode for thrill-seeking fans looking for a real challenge. So I'm guessing when you go on this plus mode, probably one of the new modes you unlock after you beat the main game, it'll just be the same five nights, because as we can see, Thursday would be night four. So it's probably just the main five nights, but on extreme, extreme difficulty. Or maybe there's new mechanics, maybe the cameras get shut down faster. Basically just turning up the difficulty a whole lot for thrill-seeking FNAF fans who want more of a challenge. Moving on to some brand new information released by Phil shortly after the Steam page went up. He actually reacted to Daco's video analyzing the trailer and also the Steam page, and he made a few interesting comments that we should take a look at. First up, he practically openly said there is not going to be an October release date. I'm really thinking it's going to be like October. <laughs> it's going to be October. <laughs> Super exciting, man. No. And the way he laughed for a super long time, very villain-like as well, Phil, maybe calm down a little bit, worried for you, bro. I don't know, it just makes me feel like maybe it's not gonna be released this year. If it is, it'll be, I'd imagine, late November going into December. But also, his reaction kind of opens it up to being pushed into 2023. If that is the case, I'd imagine probably just a quarter one release date, January, February, March, because he does also say the game's still months away, and that's kind of why he doesn't want to put any jump scare animations in trailers or on the Steam page. I wish to say that the game would come out soon, so... But it, 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 like, it's probably not going to come out soon, soon, so I don't want to spoil the jump scares of this. Because isn't the jumps, aren't the jump scares supposed to be the thing that actually makes you scared? It has like the, the risk of the jump scare that actually makes you scared. So having the jump scare of these characters put up on the page like months before the game comes out would kind of ruin it once you get to actually play it. And speaking of trailers, Phil did say that there will be another one that will have the actual release date for the game once the game gets closer to being finished. What's super interesting is that he says it'll be in the style of FNAF 1's trailer and also FNAF 3's trailer. Obviously, this isn't the main trailer. This is just like the reveal for the Steam page. Uh, for the main trailer, I have the idea of making like something more FNAF 1, FNAF 3 styled for the final trailer. That trailer will actually have the release date of the game. Because that one's important, you know? And lastly, for this clip, Phil said that Bonnie has something going on about him. You still have Chica with a little bit of a weird jaw and the off eye. You still have Bonnie with the... With the... Hmm. I should probably not say that. And keen-eyed people have actually noticed that Bonnie has a seam running along his face. And this sparked an idea. Could Bonnie, at some point in the game, take off his face and expose his endoskeleton head? Because that would be absolutely amazing. It'd be terrifying too. It'd also be a great callback to the original FNAF 1 trailer, where Bonnie does just that, exactly that, in the trailer. He takes off his face and exposes his endo head. And Bonnie is the only one with the seam. So could we see him take off his face? I don't know. That'd be terrifying. I'd love to hear what do you think. And finally, for today's FNAF Plus news video, we got just a bit more information that Phil left earlier today because he made a tweet saying just updated FNAF Plus's frequently asked questions page and put up and put it up on Steam for everyone to look at. Here is the new info you should be aware of. It ain't much, but this is just a mirror for new people that wishlist the game on Steam. Speaking of which, thanks for that. Development update three as of August 17th, 2022, which by the time you're watching this video, if you're watching it on release day, that's today. During the previous week, a Steam store page for FNAF Plus was prepared, coordinated, and released alongside the help of Clickteam LLC. A Steam wishlist trailer was released alongside it to promote the store page. This page also featured new gameplay screenshots and animated promotional GIFs. The developer is also putting work into original music and composing in general, working on, quote, test tracks, released for the fans to judge and experiment with the possibility for creating 
using a full OST for the game. Current focus is also being placed on sound work and ambience for the main nights, as well as features such as subtitles and controller support. Moving on to some brand new frequently asked questions. Will the game include Steam achievements? Plans have been made to include at least 20 Steam achievements for the game's release. Will the game include support for subtitles? Yes. Will the game include controller support? There are plans for X import controller support, though it may not be included on release. Will the game support Steam trading cards and badges? There are plans to support trading cards post release, but this will depend on publisher support after launch. Will the game support Steam Workshop and or any kind of community mods? No, the game is not built to offer any kind of mod support. Will the game support Steam animated avatars, backgrounds, and other point shop items. There are no plans to offer these features as of yet, but they may be looked at after release. Does the game support higher frame rate options? The game is built to run at a capped frame rate of 60 frames per second. And finally, why is Bonnie blue? He always was. Q, the drama in the comments, is Bonnie blue or purple? debate down below. But that just about does it for all the brand new mechanics and info regarding FNAF Plus. I am still super, super excited. I get even more excited with all these brand new teasers and trailers and theories going on about the mechanics. And tell me, what are you most looking forward to in FNAF Plus? But thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.